connect to us. There we are. You'll hear this intro again. Hello and welcome to another live program hosted by your very own Lauren Fury. I'm Leon, the Digital Services Manager, and I wanted to quickly go over some things related to our program today. Uh, the first of which is that if you are live with us on YouTube, there is a live chat window that is to the right of your screen if you're on a computer or on the bottom of your screen if you're on a mobile device. We want you guys to send in comments, questions, anything that you want to ask Lauren. This is an interactive program and she'll respond to those things live at various points in the program. If you have any questions, um, you should, uh, you can actually go to our uh, website and be directed to our digital services department and we can uh, help you out with any other programs that are coming up as well. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to Lauren Fury. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be talking to you. I just want to say that uh, being away from the museum is difficult for many of us whose primary job is interacting with visitors. So thankfully we have technology and we can actually do programming this way. So my program is called Build a Boat, but it's really a Build a Boat challenge because I'm going to be asking you for something afterwards. So I just want to get started with this. Um, let me get to here. So ahoy to everybody. Um, we're gonna be talking about some of the boats from our collection, as well as some interesting things that my coworkers have made. Um, so let's talk about what a boat is. So a boat officially, this is the official dictionary version, is a small vessel propelled by, uh, on the water by oars, sails, or some sort of engine. Now vessel might be kind of a hard word for people, but it's basically an, a, a thing that you can sit in or on and that you can get into the water with. So um, I have a lot of people think of a boat as a really kind of simple thing like this image that you see on the slide, um, but they can be really kind of different looking than from what you see here. Now, an important thing to remember too is the front of the boat is the bow, the back of the boat is the stern and port is left and starboard is right on a ship or a boat. So those are some really kind of basic things to know. So we're gonna be first talking about a really cool part of the Mariners Museum. Um, it's hard to think about this, but the Mariners Museum actually has 90,000 square feet of exhibit space. That is huge. I mean, basically that's like, you know, I mean, 90 of my houses could fit in there. That's crazy. Um, so it's really large. And one of the most interesting areas of our museum is the International Small Craft Center. Now the International Small Craft Center is actually a separate building um, that, uh, let me see if I can get this to move forward. I'm having a little problem here. My mouse is having a problem. Anyway, the International Small Craft Center is a separate building that has a huge number of um, boats in it. There are actually about 80 boats in the Small Craft Center. Uh, Leon. <laughs> hey, Lauren, you can use your uh, arrow keys on your keyboard and that, that should move as work. well. I wasn't sure because last time I tried that, it didn't work. So let's try that. No problem. Okay, we're trying. I'm hoping that my internet isn't doing something funky. Well, the arrow keys are not working either. Uh, Lauren, go ahead and give me control. You can continue with your program here. I'm gonna okay. ask for that in a second. Cool. Um, so we're gonna be talking, like I said, about the international, um, let's see if I can use this. I can't even click on approve. Leon. <laughs> there we go. Wait a minute, I got it. It's working now. Hooray, we're back. Yay! Technology. Ugh. So these are a couple of pictures from the International Small Craft Center. And like I said, there are about 80 boats from 40 different countries in this space. And, you know, like I showed you that image of that basic boat, well, most of them do not look like that boat. Uh, most of them are very different looking than that. And I'm going to show you one of my favorites is this one. Now, I know it's kind of weird looking. It's called a coracle. 
Now, if you look at that boat, it looks like it's not very seaworthy. Well, it was used in rivers. And what do you think that weird strap thing was for that you can see? Can you see the leather strap on there? What do you think that was used for? Any ideas? Well, it's actually, it kind of looks like a seatbelt but it is not a seatbelt. It's actually a strap for carrying the boat. So what you would do is you'd go down to the river and you would go across the river. Maybe you're even doing some fishing, but then when you get to the other side of the river, you're picking up this boat. That's why it's so lightweight looking. And that strap is going across your shoulders and the boat is on your back so you can walk to the next area. So that's just a really cool boat um, and it's one of my very favorite boats that we actually have. This next one is kind of bizarre looking. This is called a bull boat. Now this one is actually from um, uh, a Native American tribe and it's the Hidasta tribe from the Missouri River Valley in North Dakota. Now you can see that there's a frame made um, with this boat and then it's covered actually in bison fur. So that's what it's actually um, used how it's made. So you can see the furs on the outside, which would help shed the water. So you can use this in rivers as well. Now, the thing that's really cool about this, I have to tell you that one of my awesome co-workers, her name is Andrea, she made her own bull boat. Now you can notice that there is not exactly people riding in these bull boats. These are actually, there's garlic and a tomato. But she has a video of how she made these on the Mariners Museum website on our blogs. So you can actually look this up and uh, uh, creating a bull boat. You can see this on our, the, watch the video and see how she made these. This is something that you could do yourself. Now, another one that's pretty kind of, hmm, kind of odd looking. Um, what do you think those, those round things are? Does anybody have an idea what those round things are on this boat? kind of a, a rat, it's really a raft and it's actually made from papyrus reeds. It's from the Nile in Africa. But what do you think those round things are? I know one person who's in the audience who knows what those things are. Looks like a lot of people think that they might be from gourds. They are gourds, exactly right. So the gourds are dried, which means they're, they have buoyancy, so they float. So they're helping that raft actually float. Now, one person, who's a friend of mine, who also is one of my coworkers, um, can make anything with a gourd. I mean, anything from jewelry to birdhouses and everything. And what she did is she made an awesome little sailboat with a gourd and um, uh, some uh, fabric. Oh, actually, I think it's a paper towel for the sail. And so this was a great job, a way to use a gourd um, in her home during this time where you can't go anywhere. So that's a great, um, use of her skills. Uh, this is another one of my favorite boats. This is a fishing boat and this is the Tatara and it's from Taipei in Asia. And um, this is a great boat because it's very decorative looking even though it was a fishing boat, it's also considered a canoe. So this is a really neat boat from our collection. Now the next one, I have a, an image on this where I'm going, hmm because I'm not sure I would get into this. This is actually called a bathysphere. And this was used for underwater ex exploration. And let me get the year right for this. Um, this is from 1968. So it goes underwater, kind of like a submarine, sort of, kind of. You would climb in the top of that and they would seal it closed. Would you get in that? I would not do that. I would not be able to do that. <laughs> That is just a little too strange for me, but they would be collecting scientific experiment, uh, doing scientific experiments and collecting things for uh, more stuff to study once they got back to the surface. But that's another odd shaped uh, boat because it's still classifies as a boat. Now this one is kind of funny and I'll tell you that the name of this boat is April Fool. That's the boat's real name. And this is a tiny boat. It's only five feet, 11 inches long. Now, the reason why it's such a weird size 
is because it was setting a record for being the smallest sailboat to cross the Atlantic Ocean. It sailed from Casablanca in Africa all the way over to Florida in the United States. Now, I have to tell you, since we are very um, connected to toilet paper during this time, and many people are having a hard time still finding toilet paper. He had toilet paper on his trip for this, for this long trip across the ocean, but he ran out of toilet paper. Well, what are you gonna do? Hmm. He had a stack of magazines with him, actually Reader's Digest magazine, and he used those as toilet paper to get across that journey. But this is a really interesting looking sailboat because it looks like a mini me kind of sailboat. It's very tiny. Now, another one of my favorite boats, and as you can see, these are all very different kinds of boats. This is considered a kayak because people were sitting on top of this. Um, it's made out of metal. It's a metal made of aluminum kayak. Now, the thing, the reason why this boat was built, it was built in someone's garage in Cuba. The man who was doing the building on it was an auto mechanic. And so he, he saved scraps of metal together in his garage. And that little motor that you can see in that boat is from a lawnmower. Now, the reason why he was building this in secret was so that he and his wife could escape from Cuba. They wanted to escape from communism and come to the United States. So they built this boat, launched it, tied themselves together so in case one of them fell off the boat they would both go so neither one would have to survive without the other and they made it across those 90 miles over to the united states where they um, became united states citizens so we have this boat in our collection but it's kind of weird to think about that this little tiny boat is made out of metal and they would have been like i said sitting on the top of that now the next boat is a dugout canoe uh, this dugout canoe is from uh, the Amazon River in Peru, and it was used for fishing and also for pleasure. So they're digging out a giant log, so you have a wooden boat that's all one section. So it's very buoyant, it's, it floats very easily, um, and it's just, again, a very different, this one has a couple of seating, in, seating areas in it as well. Um, it's a, the engine is a lawnmower engine. It's a little gas-powered lawnmower engine. Um, it, it's <laughs> I'm answering these questions. Um, and also, um, April Fool, they chose that name because he kind of thought that it was such a joke. The sad thing is, just a few short years later, um, another person broke his record. So he, he didn't have the, uh, the permanent title for that, which is kind of sad. Um, here is one of the weirdest looking boats. Um, this is actually made of reeds. So this boat is made from reeds that are tied in bundles and then tied together. Uh, this boat is actually from uh, Peru, and um, it's, it's a pretty long boat, but you can see that it's got a, a kind of a pointed design so it easily goes through the water. Uh, it's just, uh, and you'd be uh, sitting in that open section and probably using some sort of paddle to, to get that to move forward. Um, the next one is really kind of interesting because it looks like a pretty simple raft. Um, it's 19 feet long. It's really quite long. So uh, it's um, uh, logs that are, are tied together, nailed together, and then you're standing on that top part. And this one is from uh, Brazil. So the interesting thing, now the picture I have after this one, I kind of sort of think they sort of go together. Um, you could use a sail on this raft, and just like this one, made from my coworker Mark. Now, take a close look at this picture. What do you think he used to make this picture? <laughs> well, you might have a hard time with this one. Well, I'll tell you that uh, as he kept telling us that they are, what do you call them beef logs? I think it's like, like a summer sausage sort of thing and English muffins and dumplings. 
That's what he used to make this boat. Oh, and the lashing is a ranch dressing. Now, this is not a boat that you can have sitting around for any length of time because it'll get really gross. But it's a cool thing that he built out of stuff that he had in his refrigerator. Um, I'm checking the questions. How many people could the one approval? Probably less than six, I would say. I don't know for sure. I don't think I, we have that information um, on the website, but you might want to check there. Um, the, yeah, the questions are coming in a little fast. Um, maybe I'll hold on just so we can keep going with these great pictures of what my coworkers have spent some of their time doing. Um, I have a few more made by coworkers. This one was made by Paige. Um, as you can tell, she used a water bottle, an orange juice container, and an awesome egg carton. Um, please excuse the extra noise if you hear that. They're building a house next door to me. Uh, so Paige built this, um, and you can see that this is, is being operated with oars. Uh, this one is awesome. This is a boat built by Sarah. It's a kind of a boat that can also be a submarine, and she used cardboard duct tape, uh, copper plating, and some screws, and it did an awesome job with this boat. Uh, the next one is made by my coworker Julie, and she did a really great job because she had somehow had some little um, action figures and a queen and a flag in her home, um, and I love that she has an I'm a Mariner um, sticker on the boat as well, so that's a really cool um, creation that she made. Um, and I, oh, there's also, I just noticed there's a seahorse there too. And I think that looks like a, a cocktail stirrer, which is pretty cool. And our, the last picture of another way to make boats is this is an awesome set of, uh, Civil War period ships that were done by the Hampton Roads, uh, Lego user group called Hard Lug. Um, they are South Side of Virginia and they are grown-ups mostly who have like a Lego club and they build and oftentimes they'll come to the museum for special events that we have and one year for our Battle of Hampton Roads commemoration in March a couple years ago they came and they built uh, they had the CSS Virginia which is the ship on the right and the USS Monitor which is the Union ship on the left and they built them uh, if you know anything about the USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia, that was a major battle of the Civil War that happened right here in Hampton Roads. And um, the turret on the Lego ship actually fires, the two cannons fired cannonball at this, the other ship. It was very entertaining for people to see. So Legos can always be used for building uh, interesting ships. We um, have seen some very cool stuff. We actually have a, um, Maersk cargo ship um, from Lego in our in our um, exhibit area in, near the model ship gallery, which is kind of cool to see. Now, what I want you all to do is build something. Um, so like just sitting here at my desk, this actually happens to also be my, um, my art studio. Um, just sitting here within reach, I have I have a gold crown. I have an egg carton. I have a ball of string. I have a weird one eyed monster. I have clothes pins. I have a plastic cup, an ice cream stick, and more. So, you in your home, where you're kind of stuck, might also have some really interesting things that you could use to build a boat. Now, you could build a raft, canoe, some interesting kind of shape, some new design. You could do a new design kind of boat. Um, anything that'd be used for ocean travel, river travel, being out on a lake, uh, doing kind of fun water sports, kayaking in a lake, all those kinds of things. I would love to see what you could come up with. Um, so here's, here's some inspiration. Um, the cool thing about recycling is you kind of have a lot of it usually around. 
plastic. Um, some things can't even be recycled in our area. Um, different kinds of tape that you can use if you have washi tape. Now remember, if you're a kid, ask your caregiver what you can use and what you can't use. Um, if you're a grown up and it's your house, go to town. Um, I would love to see uh, things made from cardboard, uh, paper, recycling, origami, um, different kinds of egg cartons. We happen to have the cardboard kind in our house, but we've had the plastic kind as well. I always say those for Christmas ornaments, but we always get those plastic ones as well. Some of them are styrofoam and that styrofoam is squishable. Uh, you can kind of use it and change it into other stuff. Um, so there's lots of really cool things that you could do. And I would love to see what you can come up with. Now we're going to um, share some information about where you can send those. Um, we have a Facebook page, the Mariners Museum and Park. Uh, you can find our Facebook page that way. I'd also love, you could email me pictures. My email address is the letter L and my last name, which is F as in Frank, U-R-E-Y at marinersmuseum.org. You can send those images straight to me. I would love to see them. I would love to see what you come up with. I know when I was a kid, you know, I would pull the couch cushions off and build a fort. Um, I, I was really fortunate that we had a real sailboat. We I grew up with a 27 foot Vega sailboat with a, with a dinghy um, that I was in charge of as an eight, nine, 10 year old kid. So I didn't really play boats because we had a real one to go on. But you know, how many of you ever built things out of couch cushions or even um, card tables? Um, I have a flat deck in my yard, which would be a great barge uh, ship to do. So there's lots of different things that you could do. And we would love, the Mayor's Museum, all of us would love to see what you can come up with. So um, I've got a couple other questions. Um, the bathosphere, ooh, size-wise, I'm not sure. But if you go to the Mariners Museum, it's just marinersmuseum.org. And you can go to explore and go to the International Small Craft Center. Bathosphere, most of the boats each have their own kind of page that you can click on um, through that website. And you can see, I'm not sure if the size, if the dimensions are on the site, but it's probably, um, it's as big, it's if you took a Volkswagen <laughs> and kind of squished it into a round shape, that's about how big it is. I think that only holds one person though. Um, I, I, I could not go in that because I would have a claustrophobic fit. I could not do it myself. Um, and the Peru, the Peru one I think is about six people, but I am not sure on that as well. That will also be on the International Small Craft Center's website, um, that information. There might be some of the sites on the website have um, native photos as well. So you can see the boats actually in use. Um, you know, and this is just a handful of the boats that we have in that collection. We have the only gondola in a collection. Um, our gondola um, was actually borrowed by the Smithsonian a few years ago because they did not have one to put on display. So they borrowed our gondola to actually show that one. So we have um, other things that are in that collection. We have surfboards. We have a pretty good surfboard collection. There's all kinds of stuff in there that you can see. Um, so there's a Dow from Kenya. There's just some really interesting boats just to go through and see um, what their stories are. Now, um, so remember, this is a challenge. So I expect to hear some um, feedback. Oh, hi, everybody. It looks like we may have lost Lauren, may have had an internet issue uh, on her end. She had said that she may have been having uh, some connectivity issues. Um, <clears throat> see if she comes back here in a second. No, I, I think we might have actually lost her, unfortunately. Um, I'm so sorry about that, but we are glad that you guys were able to join us, uh, whether on YouTube or whether you are uh, watching with us on Zoom. Oh, oh wait, I think I'm, Lauren's back. Lauren's I'm back. back. Okay, we'll go ahead uh -oh, and let her no, finish. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm You're sorry. Back, Lauren. <laughs> You're back, it's um, fine. Yeah, uh, oops, yeah, my screen's gone now. But anyway, so we want you to take part in this. I'm sorry, my... When it's not, when it's cloudy, um, 
not pouring. It can be storming and I'd have no problems with the internet, but when it's cloudy, for some reason, I have issues with the internet. So that's, that's my problem. So um, as I was saying before I was very unfortunately frozen in that lovely uh, pose, um, we want to see what you can come up with in, uh, in your own home, what you can do. Um, so that could include all kinds of stuff. Um, you could make something. If, if you want to draw something, that would be wonderful. Um, we, I used to have a coworker who um, made about 50 origami monitors. There's plans for the USS monitor. It's an origami fold. Um, so we would love to see this. Deadline. Thank you, Julie, for asking that. Um, I would say probably um, since today is the 10th, um, how about two weeks? I think two weeks is a good, good amount of time. So officially we'll try to have everything in by maybe the 1st of July. Um, <laughs> so then that, that way you can actually get something submitted. Because I want you to have some time to think, like Julie's was awesome. She really thought about that. She really kind of found some cool stuff in her, in her house to make that out of. So, um, so July 1st will be the, the cutoff date. So any other questions or uh, comments? Um, and again, if anyone that's watching via Zoom would like to raise their hand to speak live, they may as well. We'll give you all just a second here. Very quiet. <laughs> Out on YouTube, a lot of folks did have a lot of questions about the bathosphere and things, and they are getting that information as well. Yeah. Um, it looks like there's a lot of interaction going on here, and we'll be able to come back and look through these and answer any uh, remaining questions if there are any left over. Uh, but I do think that uh, I do think that might be it for us today. Okay, great. Well, like I said, you know, email me. I would love to see it. It make me very happy to get fun stuff like this in my email instead of, you know, all work-related stuff, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is still work-related, isn't it? It is, but it's really, the, it's all the fun stuff. It's the visitor engagement stuff, which, in, you know, my, my title is Manager of Visitor Engagement. So this is my favorite thing, is being to, able to talk to and engage with the public of all ages. Gotcha. Uh, well, again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you can watch this video again uh, later on YouTube. If you're watching via Zoom, um, you will receive uh, an automated email that gives you a link back to this video that you can watch later. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, please make sure that you mark your calendars for next week's program on Monsters and Mermaids. All right. That'll be fun. We'll, we'll see you guys next.